the leaves, the numbers, the cookies, the kiwis, the, the fucking gnorms. There's so many. There's so many of them. I just need. I need more. I need more. And the numbers, the numbers, the numbers are going out. I need more. I need all of them. I just need all of them. I need more. I need more. I need. I need. I need. It was just a nightmare. Oh, those big numbers, those constant waiting. It was all just a bad night. Oh, my silos are full with eggs. So, idle games. I know most people don't get the appeal of it. It doesn't look exactly engaging, does it? But Cut them and where my notes. Um, so yeah, I like idle games for the management and strategy aspects, and the actual good idle games emphasize these aspects. I think the best way to understand it is to compare idle games as stripped down versions of other management games. Evolve Idol is an idle game where you start as a wee little organism, evolving into many different beings, such as tree ants or vampiric shroom people, eventually making a whole rudimentary civilization with the oligarchy ruling or notocracy if you feel like it, who then research crazy mad scientist experiments that open up the wide reaches of space and the depths of hell. Sound familiar? Yeah, it's Ship Down Spore. Joe Rogan, everybody. Managing and optimizing all these different systems is really the core of why us idlers play idle games. Yep, I made a fandom name. In fact, idle games shouldn't really be called that because the idling isn't the main point in a good idle game. Rather, it's optimization of its systems, making those smart ass decisions to suddenly make two kiwis per second to a bajillion kiwis per second gives me more pleasure than goo. But you can also use that time to be a pilot in a huge ass mech fighting an interplanetary force for some cash moolah or be an immortal butterfly monarch that has a Scottish accent and possibly related to old Limmy. Um, next point. I'd like to really separate the coded idle games from lazy cash grabs or poorly designed slop. A good idle game lets you use your time to manage and optimize systems for maximal output and letting the actual gathering of numbers happen in the background. These games also introduce new paradigm shifts, a term that I love made by a fellow YouTuber in Genius Clown, that describes new mechanics that give another dimension to the game after you have maximized the previous one. In Evolve Idol, when your civilization has become self-sufficient and you've basically conquered the earth, the game gives you an option to research rocket propulsion, which lets you explore the stars. When Finished, this literally gives you another whole area to explore and make another civilization to start. But this is different from your normal civilization as it has different mechanics such as helium and neutroniums that are harder to manage and give a new challenge that needs more thought to maximize. Hell, there's a whole new area where you fight hell demons in hell. Not hell divers, but we diving into hell. Well, their hell would be swell, but will it happen? I can tell. Idle games are prone to exploitation by greedy companies and lazy developers. Wait a minute. I wrote that because I agree that idle games just like mobile games are prime for exploitation. Every game though can be plagued with microtransactions if they're greedy enough. But idle games are more prone due to the fact that the core design of these games have systems that are immediately annoying such as long waiting times or constant lack of precious resources and are easily configured to be annoying just by changing some numbers. But I will say that we shouldn't let the bad apples ruin the whole orchard or whatever. These shitty games sour the view of idle games and take attention away from the actual potential that idle games have. It's the same dilemma as mobile games. They can be generally good with stuff like Monument Valley and Angry Birds, but the companies just love to suck the potential out of any good idea. Just for 0.0000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
I get no bitches. Although I have defended idol games for 5 minutes and 2 seconds. Idol games are kinda mid. Let me explain with food. Idol games are like fast food. Accessible, simple, and streamlined. Most fast food can compare to the wide array of options in the culinary arts. There are absolutely stinkers out there. Crunchwrap Supreme gets all the crunch from the crap ton of lettuce that they put in it, and it should be a crime that they exist. But there are hella good fast food out there like Jollibee Chicken and Poopy Spicy Chicken Sandwich. But the best of the best fast food pales in comparison to the great homemade cooking of your parent, or the passion-infused dish that a 25-year-old indie chef made from Musa Akuminata and Malus Pumila. Idol games are really just slop in the gaming world, but there isn't anything inherently wrong with engaging in slop. I do enjoy some Mr. Beast videos and four friends play a game and goof around YouTube videos. I'm so wet. But there comes a point where you need to realize it is slop and limit your consumption of them so it can free up time to engage with quality content that you genuinely enjoy and moves you to be better or pursue your actual goals in your life. Actually, I have a confession. This whole video is a cry for help to stop my idle game addiction and force me to start editing the next vi- Wait, wait, where do you think you're going? Wait, please, finish this video. If you don't finish this video, I will-